Thank you. Hey, welcome. This is uh, Betty Smith with uh, Scioto County Daily News. I have the pleasure again to be out here at the Otway Historical Society. Obviously, it's uh, Veterans Day. I have a, a, a great bunch of veterans behind me here. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of a uh, uh, get to know folks tonight. And I would like to, uh, uh, it would be an honor for Herb to start out with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Okay, we have a flag with Roy Rosie. My name is Don Rashford from the United States Navy. I'm 74 and 78. I'm Herb Irwin, United States Navy from 75 to 79, and then in the uh, Army um, Defense Corps back home after that. My name is Jim Compton. I was in the Army from 1967 until. 1970 in Vietnam, the entire month, or the entire year of uh, 1969, came home January 70. My name's Mike Newman. I was in the Army. I joined in 1968, and I was a medical corpsman, and I spent all my time in Fort Eustis, Virginia, at McDonald Army Hospital. <coughs> My name is Derek Pennington. I was uh, in the Army. I was a sergeant in the infantry. I was stationed in Fort Benning, Georgia, but I did two tours to Iraq and one in OIF 3 and another in OIF 5. Uh, so my time of service was from 2004 to 2008. My name is Ron McClurg. I was in the 9th Division in Vietnam in 68. I got there just in time for the 68th tent and uh, got out in September. My name is Keith Stevenson, and uh, <clears throat> I was in the United States Navy. I served aboard the USS Sacramento, two tours in uh, in Vietnam. Uh, we were uh, in the conflict uh, about 20 miles offshore, and uh, kind of like the Walmart of the, of the Navy, we supplied all the bombs and uh, jet fuel and man supplies uh, that was out there. That was from the year that I was in from 67 to 69. I'm Galen Richard. I was in the Air Force before you ever got stationed at Phoenix, Arizona for two years. I was overseas at Philippine Island and in Vietnam. I think about a, one of my best friends I grew up with down here, Alan Dixon. He came back from Vietnam. He was a medic. I messed him up. I lost him. There was a lot of that. I'll try to remember the song. Went off to war I was just a kid But it is my duty, I left anyway. I love my family and the good old USA. Straight out of high school, I was quick to learn about the trouble in this world, I guess we took our turn. I learned that freedom oh, was in short supply.
I came home to my family and my town. This war had turned our country upside down. Our states divided and our politicians too. I still love my family. Now the bombs, they still fall in this world every day. I still stand for freedom and the USA. But I'm older now and I've seen my better day. But I still love my family. Second Battalion uh, 260 Infantry, and uh, we was a recondo unit, spearhead, they called us, uh, Go Devils. And they, uh, several officers 
went to the archives and wrote down uh, all everything that happened with that unit uh, all the time that they were there or they and it's just a little outpost and uh, so uh, it's got dates I mean it goes date by date by date uh, that who got killed it, they just put down one was killed that day but if you want to know who it is it have to go in the back for the name but uh, we were uh, air mobile and recon though uh, a lot of guys went out uh, we went out one time and stayed out for a whole month they brought us resupply but uh, that's what we did we just went out searched and, and somebody get in trouble they fly us in <laughs> so anyway that was now we're a little happy about that but anyway these guys put a lot of time going to the archives and going this and some of them even went, went back to Vietnam uh, to the compound but it's of course it's no longer there so uh, anyway it, uh, it is that not, book available it, or is that just something that's like a one of a kind or well they were for sale I bought two but okay, okay. <laughs> this one's autog autographed by all, all the men are, was involved in this and uh, even, I got a picture in here. <laughs> sure. sure. Group picture when we was on vacation or on a reunion. So uh, with these officers and uh, all the right, he was uh, the head man and he's passed away already. So some of us went by the way and uh, my company commander's still kicking. He's 80, I think it was 84, 86. And he still, he drove all the way from California to the reunion, St. Louis. And then he was going to Texas and back, back to uh, Auburn, uh, California. <laughs> I can't even think. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was uh, there's a lot of men that uh, even come home or lost their life due to Asian Orange. We was in the Long End Province, province where the uh, was heaviest freight with that Asian Orange. And I, we were stupid. We didn't realize what it was. And uh, so when the jungle was kind of busy and yellow looking, we just went on through it. They said go and we went. And that's, that's the way it was. Thank you for that. A question I think I want to ask in general to all of you. Uh, I, again, we went to some different ceremonies today and we've talked to a lot of different veterans. And here we are, you know, so many years forward. Um, is there any one message that you might want to get out to the younger generation? And I know you're like one of the youngest in the bunch sitting here with the most recent, uh, one of the most recent wars, but is there any uh, general information or any kind of information, like to pass a message along or? There's a comment, a general comment I'd like to make. Yes, absolutely. Uh, because when I entered the service in 1975, NAMHES was coming to an end. And I was amazed that veterans weren't getting the recognition that they deserve. And I'm really proud to see that years later, we're finally getting back to the to those men. Is there anything, um, like say someone's going into the military today, what, what would be your best advice? Well, my best advice is to look and see if you can get a lifelong occupation out of it. You know, you look at the skills and the training. I was fortunate that, you know, what I started doing in the Navy on the side became a career. And it enabled me to prosper, to feed my family. And, and I recommend that anybody do that. Uh, not everybody gets that chance when they go into the service, particularly when we look in the past. But going forward, there's a lot of technology out there. There's a lot of training opportunities. And I would encourage people to take advantage of that. His ship was the one that brought in a lot of bombs and different things, and I was wondering if the areas were similar to each other in name and. Uh, it, you know, everybody. Well, they had different divisions stationed. A lot of times they overlapped, and uh, but they all did the same thing, and uh, it didn't matter what your MOS was. When they start okay. shooting at you, you start ducking. I met two guys from Look well from the same Soda County. One was from Lukesville and one was Southwestern. Run into over there. Did you? And uh, so 
then one of them that was with me, actually with me, he passed away last year and he's really broke my heart. So, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> I'm like Jim. He's got a purple heart. He's got a purple heart. You probably do too, don't you? Don't? Lucky. I, yeah, I'm lucky too. I was locked thinner then, and I sucked pretty good to the ground. <laughs> but, uh, they wouldn't let me bring my chicken plate back. You want breast plate? And uh, they call it chicken plate. But it, it's got, or it had, somewhere over there. It's got all them holes in it. Or I wouldn't be here if I hadn't had that one. And then what it is, it's a about three quarter inch piece of Kevlar. And uh, it, uh, when the bullet hits it, what is supposed to happen is the bullet's supposed to separate like that and go in and uh, all them separations of that Kevlar is supposed to absorb that bullet so it don't get to you. But let me tell you what, it hurts. I had a black chest for about three weeks. <laughs> That's farther in than Yeah. <laughs> so when you were talking about <coughs> being at the same place at the same time, me and my brother was at Play Coup. I, I was with the 170th flying out of Play Coup all the time. And my brother was with the 604th radio division. He worked on my radios that I turned, I was a sergeant after I went back to my second time. And I had to sign off on all radios and I signed them off MFL. I'd send them off 604 to get them redone. They'd come back, DSL. Six months, me and my brother was on the same base at the same time. I was over here, he was over there. We both went to the same NCO club. We both went to the same PX. Did not run into one another. The reason he did not know I was there, because I was flying with special forces over in Cambodia and Laos all the time. So I was missing in action I went to Vietnam. They signed me MIA. And when I come back from Vietnam, they put me back on the list. So David didn't know where I was at. And Mom did not know where I was at because I couldn't write a letter. You know, because of what we was doing. And uh, it, uh, two years after David come back from Vietnam, we got to talking one day and, and uh, he said that uh, can't believe the service your radio couldn't put two together. <laughs> yeah. And he knew my name. I'm a dear, you know, the Yeah, that's scary. Now, yes. So a similar situation when I was in Iraq the second time. I had uh, suffered a gunshot wound when I was south of Baghdad. And they flew me into the green zone and uh, I had my first surgery there. I remember waking up and I was amazed that I still had my leg. And there was a doctor standing over top of me and he's like, Sergeant Pennington, where, where did you say you was from? I was like, Sir, you wouldn't. I said, I'm from Ohio. He's like, no, I'm like, what, what parts? I was like, the very southern tip. He's like, what's the name of the town? I said, well, I'm close to Portsmouth. He said, well, I'm from Waverly. He said, I, I thought your name sounded familiar. And I figured you must have been from around home. I like, that's weird. <laughs> You worked on the airplanes. I just wondered if it was the Air Force airplanes mostly or Army airplanes. No, it was the Air Force airplanes. I was trained on uh, one, two engine fighter jets, airplanes. But when I went overseas, I worked on a VIP airplane. And they even had me working on Piper Cub one time. And a B 57 bomber, which was a camera equipped in the bomb bay, take pictures over to Vietnam. And, uh, that's about all I did there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> kept him flying, though. Yeah, kept him flying. <laughs> One time I was in charge of the dust off. We was at, <clears throat> out at night, run, we ran into some North Riggers. And a couple guys we had put on the helicopter. One was already, had one dead center, and he was the company commander. I didn't know who he was at first. But you're in a hurry, you grab and take off. We had, the helicopter wouldn't land. We had to lift lift them up in the helicopter. The guy went to me from New York, and uh, I got talking to him. He said, you remember that guy got up on the helicopter and, and helped us lift him on there? He said, I said, yeah. He said, he never got off. <laughs> he took off with wherever the helicopter went. I like to get out of there too, but I mean, <laughs> but anyhow, we have to head high. We have to lift everybody in the helicopter and land. So we had two, two. Uh, well, one 
well, the guy was, uh, shot in the head and, and he, he's on Dodge the next day. But, uh, his name's in the book. Got the commander's name's in the book. So, anyway, then I went and scratched a few names off the wall. So, you leave friends by. Wonder what uh, Curb and Don was on, and I see Don has a picture there of his officer. And just wondering about that. I was on USS Puget Sound, AD 38. It was a destroyer tender, and we worked on other ships. That's me. How many floors did it have? When I was cute. It was probably about 60 feet yeah. out of the water, <laughs> and it's 627 feet. Long. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> I was on the USS in a Constitution, not the aircraft carrier, Old Ironsides. Um, very fortunate to get duty on that. It's got kind of a connection back here in Otway, as everything does. Um, back in the fifth grade, Mrs. Keener asked us to memorize the, uh, the poem. By Oliver Wendell Holmes, I tear her tattered ins and down, one is away on high. I didn't learn it. And she called on me on that Monday morning to recite, and I couldn't do it. And I put on a charade like I was all choked up and uncomfortable speaking in public, <laughs> real lies. But uh, somehow in 75, I got selected out of the boot camp in San Diego to, to be a board old Ironsides. And uh, although I never learned the poem, I often thought, about Mrs. Keener, but here's what I found out about the ship and, and why it's, it's so important, is that when we won our independence uh, in the Revolutionary War, we were not a very strong country. Uh, we got pirated all the time in the Med, and uh, it was George Washington that decided to have these ships built, six of them, frigates, all of them made from resources grown right here in the United States, and that was the live oak, uh, and the Georgia Pine, and we encountered in 1812 British ships of the line, and that that victory, one ship taking on two, um, made us a world power in a second. So that was the very beginning of, of our strength. If you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. That's why the Navy continues to maintain that ship today, and I'm still humbled and honored that I got selected to go there. Um, but again, you know, I'm just like these guys, you know, I, I grew up in this area and, you know, when it, when things happen, you go and you do it. And, and that's pretty much that, that sums it up for me. Although I'm in awe of, of these people and what they did. Didn't old Ironsides have like 43 battles and was never lost. Yep, yeah, that's true. For 43 engagements and never lost. Yeah. And then this plaque here, you had one of you. One, that's the oldest one. He got killed in World War II. Yeah. So, did you ever get to see him come home then, or? Uh, or I wasn't born yet when he got killed. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know him. He got killed just by the time I was born. Oh, okay. Yep. July 1944. Mm -hmm. You were born in 43. Oh, yeah, he got killed in yeah. 44. Yeah. I was just a few months old. Yeah. When he got killed. Yeah. Well, that's what I was talking about. Um, do you, I know you said World War II for him. So, one can you, was in Korea. Uh, two of them was in Korea, one of them wasn't in Korea, he was in Austria. And then uh, my younger brother was in the same time I was, but uh, he was in... Army. Yeah, he was in the Army before we were taking that old seat. Germany. Huh? Germany. Germany, yeah. Okay. And you were in Vietnam. You were in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And it's odd sometimes to hear that because sometimes you'll have some of the family that goes in and some stay behind. Yeah. Or, 
Yeah. I'll try to close with this. Is there anything, um, again, moving forward, because you know we got young ones in here tonight, and you guys, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of history, a lot of wisdom. Do you, on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys participate like in some of the local schools or anything or do they have you guys come in and talk or no. well hopefully with this video <laughs> we'll be able to get some of these messages out there okay um, yeah. i'm proud to be what a term really yeah. I was proud of it. Well, we had a job to do and we did it. Yeah. Well, they said go and we went. Yeah, that's what it was. And, you know, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Even the football team has somebody on there carrying them water. So we all worked together for one common goal. Right. I know we fight amongst ourselves in different well, branches. <laughs> we <laughs> joke with it. each other, but when it comes down to it, we're all the same. Daddy over there that brought them bombs to you. But we don't yeah, sit around and tell war stories. No, we not. see one another. We don't talk about that right. stuff. That's like those when you ask about those. Those are things in a different world. Yeah. Now, if you want me to explain them to you, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. If you were born blind, explain mm -hmm. the color red to me. Right. I know I wouldn't be able to. And I can't explain what I went through. For right. You. Right. No one. And no one else. Yeah.